Hey, what's going on, everybody? I put my camp back on last night after streaming. This is day two, day two in a row that I'm streaming something. The fighting game community is crazy, uh, and things are changing all the time, which is great. So Capcom Cup came out today, and they announced that uh, SOCD cleaning, or simultaneous opposite cardinal direction cleaning, um, has some new rules, and it it basically has kind of upended a lot of folks who play all button or hitbox controllers in the community. For a long, ooh, excuse me, for a long time, when you pressed up and down at the same time on your all button controller or your hitbox, uh, it would register as an up. So what that would let you do is hold the down button uh, to charge, say, a flash kick with guile, and then just tap the up button, and it would instantly uh, do the correct inputs for doing your flash kick. And uh, for the long time, left plus right always equaled neutral. So you couldn't charge like a, a sonic boom or something like that. Uh, well, Capcom came out and said, hey, no more. All you can do is uh, if you have an all button controller or a hitbox, you have to send Street Fighter VI both up and down if you're hitting both of those buttons or you can't send anything. Uh, and if you're hitting left and right, you have to send both left and right or nothing to the game. And basically what they're doing and what they're saying to me is we are going to handle all of the simultaneous opposite cardinal direction cleaning in game in software. So they finally realized that, hey, these uh, all button controllers aren't going anywhere and they had to implement rules uh, to keep it fair across the board. So uh, I think this is going to cause a lot of problems because a lot of folks uh, are used to playing a certain way. So it's going to require a lot of uh, folks to adapt. And uh, that kind of goes with the territory. Now, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, if you will, in the old days of like Street Fighter 2 and stuff like that, SOCD cleaning, that wasn't even a thing. No one even thought about it because uh, for a long time, no one even considered putting buttons in the place of up, down, left, and right, uh, which would allow you to press both at the same time. So uh, it would create some funky behaviors because the game didn't know what to do if you pressed up and down at the same time. Uh, I haven't done any testing on that uh, because I'm not a hitbox player or an all button uh, controller player, uh, but I've been assured by other people that uh, the reason SOCD cleaning came about was because the games didn't really know what to do with it. So hitbox, when they came on the scene, they made a decision that up plus down would equal up, left plus right would equal uh, neutral. Uh, I think uh, maybe it was two or three years ago now, uh, there was this thing that uh, the beast, Diego Umahara, used, the Gaffro box, and it was, um, I think, last input priority came about, and he was wiping the floor with people, and that, I think, all got banned pretty dang quick. So uh, everyone kind of defaulted back to the up plus down equals up and then left plus right equals neutral and things were kind of cool. Well, today's a big change. The rules are different. And as far as I can tell, it only affects Street Fighter VI in the Capcom Pro Tour this year uh, and probably going forward unless a huge community backlash occurs uh, and a lot of people are stuck with controllers that may or may not conform to the SOCD cleaning. I don't know how they're going to enforce this. Uh, I suspect uh, there's there's probably a lot of ways they could do it. Either plug it in and show me that it works, do button checks and stuff like that, but I'll leave that up to them. I don't want to even mess with that. that. But one of the big concerns is, is like people who use Hitbox branded controllers, that SOCD cleaning is kind of built into the board and it will require a firmware update to work uh, because they handle it at the hardware level. So the game only sees what the, the, the Hitbox is outputting. So if you hit down and up on a Hitbox, the game will only see up. If you hit left and right, it won't see anything. Uh, so if they want to change that to be in compliance with Capcom, Capcom Pro Tour rules, they're going to have to do a firmware update. But uh, other companies like Victrix and uh, Quamba and um, uh, Brook and all these other all these other makers that have um, boards and whatnot are also going to need the same thing. I think right now the only safe one is the Pico Fighting Board because the Community Edition firmware has a lot of different SOCD cleaners built in. And I think there's uh, at least one or two other SOCD cleaners on the market that you can buy that let you change uh, the behavior in the board itself. Um, but they cost a lot of money. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'm not a hitbox player. I don't look at it. So there are solutions out there. But in any case, if you, if, if you have a branded hitbox and maybe the Victrix hitbox, uh, you're going to need to put something in line with your buttons before it gets to the circuit board on your controller to handle SOCD cleaning 
that is in line with what CPT is saying the rules are. So what I did is I adapted my SOCD cleaner uh, that complied with the old way, uh, and I posted the files up on my website. And you, uh, Okay, so anyways, let me get back to it since you guys have no idea what I've been saying for the last couple minutes. Um, I've created a SOCD Cleaner V4 on my webpage, and you can download the files for as little as a penny. Um, you can literally name your own price and pay one penny, add it to cart, check out, and you will have the... Um, the Gerber files that you need, the the build of material or the build of bill of material, holy smokes, uh, list for JLCB to uh, put all the surface mount connectors on here, and then you'll also have the CPL file so they know where to actually let their pick in place uh, push through and do it. There is a little bit of surface or uh, through hole soldering here. You're going to need to solder on a. Uh, uh, JST SHF connector here, a five pin. And then over here, you're going to want to do some, um, 2.54 millimeter, uh, screw terminals. You can use two pin, four pin or eight pin and just, you know, mash them in there. It'll be good to go. Uh, so ideally what you do is you connect your, let me see if I can make this big. Um, you're going to connect your JLF to this connector here. And then over here, uh, you'll connect up each one of your individual buttons. And these two chips here, they're going to take your left and right, uh, if you push them at the same time, output a neutral, and this one will take your up and down. If you push them at the same time, it will output as neutral. All right. So uh, the thing that I'll say is these are unverified, but because they are based on another design that is out and I have uh, sold before, uh, I'm pretty confident they're going to work. Uh, I do say, you know, licensing, they're meant for end users and hobbyists, not businesses. So don't make a bunch of these and sell them. Uh, that's not what the point of this is. Um, if you want to buy like, you know, get five made and you'll hand them out to your friends and stuff and split the cost of the manufacturing, that's perfectly cool. Uh, if you do want to sell these, though, reach out to me and we can work something out. There are plenty of other devices out there that are going to kind of help this out and uh, do it, the, basically do the same thing. But I think you can get about five made for like 20 bucks uh, with JLC PCB before shipping. So let's go through that. Let's say you go here, you pick this up, you add it to cart, you check out, it's going to download a zip file. In that zip file, you're going to have the Gerber files, like I previously mentioned, the bomb and the CPL. So let's go over here. This is JLCP, JLC PCB. They're a manufacturer, great for doing um, small runs of things. And uh, I've had very good luck uh, using them in the past. So what we'll do here is I'm just going to walk you through it. We're going to click on order now. It's going to come here. You're going to add Gerber file. Let's see. Uh, all right, cool. And this is off screen, so you can't see it because uh, it's just a window pop up. And I'm going to add the Gerber file. I'm going to hit open and it's going to do my do the thing, process it. Just takes a second. All right. And once it's up, boom, you're going to see that's what the board looks like. The left here is the top. The, the uh, right here is the bottom. All right. Base material, fiberglass, four. Fine. Layers, two. Yep. Dimensions, it automatically picks that. PCB quantity, five. You can change it all the way up to eight, 80,000. Don't do 80,000. Do five. <clears throat> and you can leave industrial consumer electronics checked. Uh, different design, one single PCB, fine. 1.6 millimeter PCB thickness is good to go. You can change the color if you want. If you add, if you do anything besides green, it takes a couple more days. Um, I'm going to just stick with green for the purposes of this. Uh, Hazel with lead, uh, lead free if you want to go eco-friendly. And Enig, don't worry about that. You don't need it. Uh, copper weight, one ounce is good. You can basically leave all these alone. Uh, you can choose confirm production file and it's going to let you look at it one last time before they manufacture it. You can remove the order number if you want. I don't mess with that. There's no gold fingers or castellations, so we're good to go. Then you come down here and you click this little button that says coupon free assembly for your PCB order. Boom. Click that. And you want to assemble the top side. There are no parts on the bottom. For the rest, you can leave all this alone. Economy or economic, top side, PCB quantity five or PCB A quantity five. They'll assemble all five for you. Uh, tooling holes, leave that added by them. Confirm parts placement. We're going to do yes because we want to double check that. All right. And then we'll hit confirm. All right. Now, uh, this is going to show you what the PCB looks like. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Top, bottom. Great. Uh, let's go ahead and hit next, and then we're going to add the bomb. And off the screen, it's going to pop up a window for me to upload my files. 
And I'm gonna choose the, the, the Excel file in that download that says top underscore bomb. It'll be very obvious, hit open. <clears throat> and this is gonna automatically select all the parts you need and everything like that from their library. Then click the add CPL file and then choose the top underscore CPL. Hit okay. And then click this process. All right, and then it comes through here and it automatically selects a bunch of stuff. All of these things are already selected with parts. This is uh, $3.09 for 10 of these things. Uh, got an LED here. I'm not sure why I didn't select the uh, capacitor. Let's go ahead and search that real quick. And this one here, 10 microfarads is what you want. You see it up here in the comment. Um, and it is a uh, Tant uh, capacitor 2012, just like that and then hit select. Okay, and then hit next. On the next page, it's gonna let us see the board with the parts in place. Now this is where you get to validate that they're all placed in the right spot and oriented correctly. And right off the bat, I see a couple errors that we have to fix. Capacitor one, it's backwards. We're gonna click it, and then we're gonna rotate it up. This line here is five volts. Uh, you want the positive to go to the positive. Same thing with C2, it's backwards. I don't know why that happened. I'm gonna rotate that up. LED one, this is coming through a resistor. You want your positive facing north and your negative facing south. So we'll rotate that. And then this capacitor over here, it's 180 out. Don't know why. So let's go ahead and write, boom, there you go. So now the positive is assigned to the positive side on all the capacitors, the LED is good to go. And they're gonna put all these resistors, all these capacitors, these uh, logic chips, all that in place for you so you're good to go. Uh, that looks pretty good. Pin one down here is right, and then we hit next, and then it's going to let us go ahead, and there you go, $23.84, you're going to get five of these. And then for your product description, just go to research and choose DIY, and then hit save to cart. And just like that, you're good to go. You're going to get five of these. And then you can check out and, and do your whole thing. Uh, shipping will vary, of course. All right, so... Uh, I really wanted to do this because I think it's crazy that they uh, they put these rules out right beforehand instead of at the end of last season because not a lot of people have a lot of work to do on their, their fight sticks, uh, especially if they're all buttons. I know I saw something from Junk Food. They're, in, they're doing a, a firmware update for all their snack boxes, which is great. That's exactly what you want to see. Uh, I think Brooke will also implement the neutral. Um, they're very good about supporting the community and making sure they've got it all good to go too. Um, Based on Hitbox's announcement, I think they are probably going to try and fight it a little bit uh, because remember, you know, there's more fighting games out there than Street Fighter VI, of course, and Street Fighter V. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and I think those were the only announcements that I really saw. The Pico Fighting Board also already has a bunch of SOCD modes built in, so you can just use the, the correct one there right in the web GUI. Um, and I think... Uh, there's a bunch of other options for this too. So if you guys need this, use it. Remember, you can buy it for a penny from me. And it's, again, just to prevent bots from going in and getting it or a bunch of companies going in and getting it and me not knowing uh, that they're going to go out and sell them. Uh, and get them made. Help your buddies out. Fix up your controller. Super easy to install. If you don't know how to solder, I'm sure you have a friend nearby that can. Uh, I actually, when I lived in Northern Virginia, I actually found someone on Craigslist that could solder. Um, I had a bunch of stuff to make, so I didn't want to just do it all myself. So I hired someone to come do it and they did a fantastic job. So, uh, there's always those kind of options. A lot of fight stick monitors out there still active in the scene. Um, I think on the East coast, Gummo may or may not still be doing it on the West coast. Maybe Vic Ramirez is still doing it. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, and even in your local scene, in your local, uh, local TOs and stuff, they probably have some connections. So you guys should be good to go on all this. I hope you guys find this useful and uh, it, it helps kind of ease the pain going over here. As you saw, it's not a very expensive or hard thing to do. You just kind of install it between your buttons and your stock PCB and you'll be good to go. So until next time, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully we can have a quiet week for the rest of the week in the FGC. Fingers crossed. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.